Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video in the series where we are building patches from scratch on the Behringer DeepMind. So today we're going to build a patch which has been requested a few times on the channel, and it's one that I've been very excited to get around to. And that is because today we're going to turn the DeepMind into a drum machine. Now, just to set expectations right at the start, we're not going to end up turning our DeepMind into an 808 or a 909. Uh, rather, we're probably going to end up with something that's a bit quirkier and esoteric, and that's sort of borne out the fact that we are making something which is designed to be a melodic synthesizer into something that's much more percussive and gritty and dirty, uh, and uh, I'm really excited to get on with it, so let's do it. Now with a synthesizer as comprehensive in its features as the DeepMind, which has so much opportunity to modulate the sound, there are lots of ways that we can achieve percussive types of sounds. So what I am showing you today is one of what are probably thousands of ways that you can approach this kind of problem, but hopefully it will introduce you to a couple of concepts which you'll be able to sort of reuse and twist and reapply in different ways to kind of get to these sort of percussive patches. So I'm going to start by establishing a kick drum. Okay, so kick drum, how can we do a kick drum sound well? Um, we're on an initialized patch at the moment. I'm going to turn off the sawtooth. Sawtooth waves don't belong in percussion. That's not entirely true. But uh, certainly a down-tuned square wave is going to give us more girth. So we're going to start with our square wave sound here. We're going to go into the edit menu for the oscillators and we're going to drop its range so it's nice and low. So we're going to come back to how we can turn this boring square wave into more of a kick drum sound in a moment. What I want to do first is establish a way of getting a four to the floor kind of dung, 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 dung beat happening. Uh, and to do that, we're going to make use um, of the LFO and also the envelope. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to LFO1 and I'm going to change its shape down to a... Uh, sawtooth, uh, descending sawtooth. Now, um, depending on how we apply this LFO, actually the shape that we go for here might not be the most important thing, and, and I'll explain why that is in a second. The thing that I am going to change, which is important, is that I'm going to turn on the ARP sync. Now, what the ARP sync does um, is not actually related to the arpeggio actually running. So um, ARP sync works whether or not we have the arpeggio running at all. And you can see here on the light here that this LFO is indeed cycling around, albeit very, very slowly at the moment. So what we've got here now is, um, rather than a rate, is a clock divide. And this clock divide is going to be uh, relative to the rate, the tempo that is set here on the arpeggiator sequencer setting. It doesn't mean that we need the arpeggiator running to make use of it. And indeed, if we turn this into, say, um, one over four for a four to the floor, you see here it's pulsing away, dunk, 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 dunk. And if we alter the right here, that's going to alter our LFO as well. And that's going to become important because we are going to make use of a secondary um, tempo synced modulation source uh, in a moment. Uh, so having this sync like this is indeed important. Okay, so we've got this LFO pulsing away. So how are we going to make that give us a dunk, 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 four to the floor? Now, we could, in theory, sort of patch the VCA into our LFO here and you get a dung, 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 dung happening. But the thing that's going to happen there is that we are absolutely kind of forced into this straight up sawtooth shape. It's always going to go up to full and it's going to decay down to nothing and then start again. It doesn't allow us to sort of be flexible about the shape and, dare I say, envelope of our sound. So if we head over into the VCA uh, envelope menu here, up at the top here we've got this VCA env trig thing here and at the moment it's set to key and what that means is that the envelope will trigger start when we hit a key. So if I alter the shape of the the envelope, you can hear that it starts when I hit the key and then it releases when I release the key. And that's all well and good, usually. Now, we actually have a bunch of other options here. So we can have it triggered by, for example, the LFO. Now, this means that this envelope is going to trigger every time this LFO cycles round. Now, notice there that when I press the key, it didn't start straight away because the LFO hadn't gone back to the start, but if you watch the light on the LFO, I'll try and catch it. 
Now, if I lower my sustain and my decay there, you can hear now that my VCA is cycling. So rather than being forced to have that smooth shape of the LFO, we can alter the shape here instead. We can also have it not go all the way down to zero. Uh, so perhaps we won't quite have it go down to zero. Okay, so we've now got a square wave that pulses away when I press the key. So that's all very well and good, but it doesn't sound much like a kick drum. Now one of the main ways that we can get a kick drum kind of sound, kind of percussive sound, is to have a very quick pitch bend up at the start of the, uh, the note and then decay very quickly afterwards. So if we come over here and we turn up the pitch mod here, you can hear that it's doing just that. At the moment, if we go into the edit menu, we can see that the pitch mod source is set to the LFO and it's following that LFO. Now, the problem is that doesn't sound much like a kick drum because that pitch bend is taking the entire cycle to get back down to the bottom. It's kind of it's kind of cool sound, and maybe if we make it uh, if we make it pitch bend a little bit less. That sounds even worse. So what we need is something, another modulation source which is going to allow us to be a lot sharper. So we could pass this over to LFO, uh, sorry, envelope one, which as you remember, we've got kind of a different shape there. Yeah, but it's still not quite working. We need something that's more customizable. So we're going to set it to envelope three. And we're going to head over to the mod envelope, which is envelope three, and we're going to set that to be sequenced by our LFO one, or rather triggered by LFO one, as well. And what this means now is we have full control over that first initial pulse. We can get it real short and punchy. We're going to have it long and, and blippy or even longer than it would have been on the LFO if we want. We have control over it now. Cool, so now we've got kind of a kick drum sound. Perhaps we'll go down an octave and... Yes, meaty. And of course we can change how attacky it is by changing our pitch mod here. So there's our kick drum. Right, let's add some snare type elements to it. So the obvious way to add snare is obviously to chuck some noise in like that. Now obviously we don't want to do that by hand. Now we could approach this noise in a couple of different ways. We could set up our LFO2 to be a faster um, sawtooth. Um, or a slower sawtooth rather, and we can have it fade in and out there. Again, we'd come into the problem of being sort of beholden to the shape of the uh, the waveform there. But we actually have another really useful feature in the deep mind, and I, I don't know how well understood it is necessarily, but hopefully I'll be able to shed some light on it today. And that is if we head into the ARP seek, me seek menu and we head across one there, we get to the control sequencer. Now the control sequencer is a, is a funny one. The DeepMind didn't come with a sequencer, sort of a note for note sequencer, play in some notes, press play, and those notes played back like you would get on say the key step. Instead what we've got here is something much more akin to an analog step sequencer, something like the Korg SQ1 for example. And if we head into the sequence here, we can see that we've got all of these steps that we can scroll across and we can assign either a positive or negative value to each of those steps, like so. Now, at the moment, you'll notice that the sequencer is not moving and that's because uh, it's not set on a mode where it's going to play. It's also, now I come to think of it, not set to play full stop. So if we come back out of this menu here, the first thing is we want to actually enable this uh, sequencer. We also want to choose a clock divider. So uh, we had our um, we had our kick 
LFO running at quarter notes. Let's set this to run at eighth notes to begin with at least. And again, if we head into the sequence again, it's moving and it will restart every time I press the key. Now that's going to become a problem because that is not always going to restart with the LFO. So what I'm going to do is come back into the edit here and where we've got the key loop here, I'm going to set it to just to loop on. And if you look here, it will always be looping no matter. But it will also always be in time with our kick drum. So just to begin with, I'm just going to arbitrarily pick a couple of steps. I'm just going to turn the step sequencer up quite a lot. Those will do. I'm going to come out of the step sequencer and I'm going to head into the mod matrix. Now as the source, I'm going to scroll across and I'm going to select, uh, where is it? It's after the envelopes, I think. Control sequencer, there we go. And the destination, I'm going to set to my noise level. And if I turn up the depth now, we can hear that we've got kind of a snare thing going on. It's not perfect, but we can make it better. So the first thing that we can do to make that sort of boring kind of uh, noise which has no kind of shape to it is to give it some sort of timbral shape. So what we could do, so we could lower the frequency of our VCF here and we could have it open up on the envelope. But at the moment, because our VCF envelope is set to be key trigger and I'm just holding it down, it's just staying where it is. Now, we could set this to be our LFA one again. Okay, so that's kind of sequencing with our slower kick drum, essentially. If I Here that's very much related to our kick drum. We don't really want that, we want it to be more related to our snares. So if we scroll across our VCF env trig here, we can get to seek. So this is going to trigger every time the sequencer goes across instead. This has done two things. It means that the VCF is happening more related to our snares. It's also given us some additional kind of backbeat on our kick drum as well, which is quite cool. Okay, let's go back into the sequencer here and let's put a couple of what we could consider hi-hats, so kind of... some ghost notes. Okay, so we've got some kind of high hatty snarey kind of shuffly things going on there, but again, just that kind of straight up Noise isn't that interesting. What I'd like to add is some sort of tone to our snare drum as well. So if we're going to add tone to our snare drum, what that kind of means is that we want to probably trigger our spare oscillator here. With our snares. But at the moment, obviously this is way too low. It's not really doing anything for me in terms of a snare thing. So let's go into the edit menu here. Let's turn its range up. Let's turn its pitch up. You hear there that it's also triggering with that um, bend the same way that we did with our oscillator one. That's because by default, the pitch mod on oscillator one will also affect oscillator two. I'm kind of happy with that because it does mean that we've got a second pitch mod opportunity here. So first of all, let's make sure this is only kind of coming in with our snare drums. 
And the way that we can do that is very similar to the way that we did it with our noise sources that we'll go across uh, to control sequence as our source. We'll set our level, um, uh, our oscillator two level. Uh, turn the oscillator two level down and turn the depth up. Okay, the tone there is kind of boring at the moment. So let's make it a bit more metallic by setting a tone mod. Bit more of a ping there. Still not quite kind of metallic and interesting enough for me. So let's do something which is always a good way to get sort of metallic, harsher tones into a sound, and that is to modulate it at audio rate. So we've still got this spare LFO here, LFO2. I'm just gonna max its rate, and I'm gonna come into the edit menu for oscillator two, uh, oscillator two, and I'm going to set its pitch mod source to be LFO2. So let's have a listen to what we can do there. Sweet. Nice. Okay. Uh, that's probably too loud in a lot of places. That sort of has made it really obvious. So let's just dial it back a bit. It's kind of introduced quite an interesting rattle to the situation. Now we've got all this top end uh, instantly. I think it, we're starting to lose our kick drum. So easy way to bring back some bottom end. Let's hit the boost on the high pass filter. Okay, cool. Yeah, feeling that. Now, um, if we wanted to introduce a bit more character and grit, uh, we could apply that audio rate LFO to other things as well. The obvious one actually would be the filter. We might want to fine tune the filter a little bit anyway. So let's just make sure by going into our uh, edit menu for the VCF that our LFO source is indeed LFO2, which is our audio rate LFO. Perfect. And let's see what introducing a bit of audio rate to our filter does for us. You almost get kind of like a distortion happening. Maybe just a little bit. Okay, now this is kind of like a sort of an abuse of a synthesizer drum machine. And I always find with these sort of sounds, we can really enhance it with some effects. And as we know, with the DeepMind, we've got a very um, generous effects uh, section here. So let's head on into the effects. Now, usually I have my effects set to send, which means that we get an analog dry through and then any effect that we add is sort of mixed in on top of it. Um, there's a good reason for doing that, uh, mostly because I'm usually using delays and reverbs, and that's the more efficient way of doing it. And actually, you can, I don't know whether you'll be able to hear it here, but you can hear a difference when you switch to insert. And what insert means is that everything is going through the effects system. So that means that your analog signal is getting converted to digital to go into the digital effects, and then is getting converted back to analog out the other end. Let's not get into an argument about uh, how good the digital to analog converter uh, inside the uh, synth is. I'm sure it is good enough. Um, <laughs> I just end up feeling like a Luddite and wanting to have send effects. But uh, in this case, I want to have inserts because I want to actually affect the actual synth sound and not sort of mix in an affected version with it. So let's um, head down to the bottom of the list first of all because I think we need some reverb to create some space. I'm going to use the vintage reverb. It's got a cool sort of industrial old school uh, feel which is kind of what I'm hearing here. Just reduce the mix a little bit. Let's give us a bit of stereo width as well if we bypass that. Everything's kind of down the middle. It's 
giving us a bit more width there. Uh, the next one I'm going to use is where are we? The fair comp. So this is a compressor. I'm going to use this just to give a bit more sort of bump and grind to the sound. So let's head into the fine tuning here. Uh, I'm just going to go across to the output gain and turn it down a bit so that I can turn the input level a bit higher without it overdriving. And I'm just going to adjust the threshold and the time until I feel something good happening basically. Yeah, that's feeling nice. But the final thing I want to add, and if you've seen my uh, video on the uh, monologue where I've done drum machine stuff, this will probably not surprise you. So I want to add some overdrive to this. So I'm going to head over to uh, the rack amp. Okay, so just use it on the default to begin with. This is with everything bypassed. And then when we turn on our effects now. Yes. Okay, so let's affect some of what we've got going on here. Um, I'm just going to turn the level down a bit again because I want to turn the pre up a bit. A bit more high end. A bit more low end as well, why not? So the cab here is a is like a speaker cab emulation. I kind of like it turned on to be honest. This is with it off. It's got a certain vibe to it, but it's kind of eating away at all the body. So, and then essentially you've got kind of these here, which are sort of low, mids, high, and an overall drive sound, a bit, a bit grittier. So the interesting thing with this is that the mid-range really emphasizes those snare hits, but it kind of messes with the bottom end. So what I'm going to suggest that we do is actually automate it so that whenever there is a loud snare hit, that jumps up to emphasize it. So if we head back into our mod matrix, and again, we're going to be using our control sequencer as our source, because that is what is governing our snare drums. There we go. And we're gonna whiz across to the end here. We're looking for, when we get into the effects here. So we're looking for FX2 and we want punch. There we go. And as we turn this up, Let's maybe do some fine tuning, maybe go to the VCF envelope and have it close off a bit more. So with a really short delay, we can... Uh, so uh, we're kind of getting there with, with the vibe that I'm looking for. Um, one thing that is really, really interesting to do, however, is if we head into the um, sequencer again, you can see here at the bottom that we've got a length value. At the moment, this is um, 16. So this is a kind of a 16 uh, beat bar. And that makes sense because we've got our four to the floor kick drum happening. But things get really interesting if we make this kind of not line up properly. So if we go to 15, so that we're not repeating every four kick drums, if you like, we get some really interesting stuff happening. See here we're not getting things sort of overlap quite the same way. So changing the length of your sequence to something that doesn't completely overlap with your kick drum can really introduce a lot of interesting stuff. So we go the other way as well.
And the thing that's really exciting about getting a patch set up this way is now that we've got a bunch of controls that are going to allow us to create sort of performance changes. So uh, as an example, if we set the sequence going, we could change the pit pulse width modulation, which is going to mess with our kick drum. Make it spittier. Make it basically disappear. Similarly with our pitch mod, we can make it so that we don't have the punch at the front and just get kind of like a pulsing bass note. And just get the snare happening. back in. Similarly, if we move over to Oscillator 2, which is kind of our tone part of our snare drum, uh, we can do things like mess with the tone mod. To change the tone of our snare drum. We've also got our pitch mod here, remember, which has been audio rate modulated, and we can turn that back into kind of like a pingy pingy thing. which is super, super cool. As a variation, obviously the tone mod's gonna have more of an effect there now. Almost sounds like a kind of a resonating string now. If we head over to our uh, VCF section, there's a ton of stuff that we can do. So we could turn down our VCF uh, envelope, put it in the, in the club next door if you like. Open up the really cool variation. Get the resonance happening. At the moment, our audio rate LFO on our VCF is turned down. Make it even grittier. Tweak the envelope so it's not quite as big. And then of course we've got our envelopes as well. And all of these envelopes are going to affect something interesting. So the VCA is the overall kind of shape of the four to the floor thing. So we can have it stutter and just on the kicks. Because remember it's our four to the floor that's being affected here. We've got our, uh, we'll go to the mod now, so this is the punch on the kick. <laughs> yeah, boy. And then we've got our VCF as well, which is, remember, this is, is sequence, uh, sorry, uh, linked and looping to our sequence. So that's going to be our, our pulse, what's happening there. And so get things more sort of spitty there. We'll open up that delay to make it somewhat open. You get lost in patches like that for days. Love it. And I hope you enjoyed it too. So there we go, guys. That is a drum machine of sorts, gritty and industrial and interesting. And we've got so much sort of performance options on the front panel. And we've got all of the interesting stuff that we can do tweaking that control sequence as well. Like I say, there are probably millions of ways that you can approach getting these sort of looping drum machine patches on the Deep Mode 6. It's such a deep synth with so many options. But I hope that this is kind of maybe sparked an interest in some of these techniques that are a little bit more out there and uh, the way that you can apply them, especially using the control sequence. So, you know, our mod matrix is not that complicated on this one. It could be a lot more complicated. We could be rooting um, 
uh, other uh, envelopes, maybe uh, having the filter envelope modulate the level of oscillator two, as well as the control sequencer, for example, so that it sort of shuts down a bit more and rather than pinging across the whole thing that th there are lots of ways that we can fine tune this patch and, and mess with it but hopefully this has kind of introduced you to some ideas that you can go away and apply to kind of do similar sort of tricks yourself anyway guys i very much hope that you enjoyed this if you did please do make sure you give the uh video the old thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and if you want to make sure that you definitely don't miss out on any upcoming videos make sure you've hit the bell as well so that you get the notifications when the new videos come out also let me know in the comments below what else you want to see in this series what types of patches you want to see me put together uh, and other things that you want to see on the channel in general do you want to see uh, some more monologue videos for example i haven't touched the monologue on the channel uh, for quite a while but it was featured in my uh, live performance recently i kind of fell in love with it again i always fall back in love with the monologue every time i touch it it's just such a cool synth so do you want to see some of that do you want uh, to see some of the other synths that uh, i've got that i haven't featured quite as much so for example the Soulsby at megatron kind of an 8-bit really interesting synth i've got the dope for deep mind which i've barely uh, featured on the channel at all we can do some stuff with that as well let me know in the comments below what you would like to see other than that guys thanks so much for joining me as always take care bye bye i'll see you again soon